What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Men's Comics. It is Friday, so of course that means one thing. It's time for Last Call. So here we are, guys. Last call. You guys know what that means. We're talking about books that are heading final order cutoff this coming Monday night. That's right. It's your last chance to get these in before the orders close, right? Some cool picks, some unique choices. I got Marvel on my hat, but you will not see Marvel in this episode. But nonetheless, we've got some great picks. Yeah, we're going to it right now, starting with one that we haven't heard Jack talk about in a little bit. But he's a beloved fan of part of this franchise. I'd say both franchises, but we get that epic crossover with My Little Pony and Transformers in number one. Yeah, shout out to uh, John and Erica over at 616 Comics, uh, our, one of our retail partners who we were working on some exclusive variant programs with because... One day I got to have a My Little Pony exclusive. You know, it's, if, for those who are new to the channel, I've often um, really been amazed by the amount of My Little Pony fans and the, uh, specifically in, within this Friendship is Magic uh, comic book series that IDW has put out. It's been a consistent seller for me at conventions. And it's one that I often get laughed at for carrying uh, from other dealers. But, but you know what? does not matter. It's been good money for a number of years, and a lot of savvy dealers know that. And this crossover may seem out of, out of the blue, but believe it or not, My Little Pony and Transformers did cross over in a very famous convention variant that has become back issue gold, and I believe is really um, the reason why this series has come about. There are some incentives. There's a 1 in 10 incentive, as well as a monstrous 1 in 100 incentive. So be on the lookout for that one. Yeah, usually anytime we've talked about that before, if IDW puts a 1 in 25 or even higher, that's one to kind of keep an ear to the ground on. But some people like it, some people don't. But we want to make sure you're aware of it before final order cutoff. Sticking with IDW, we have that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, but we're not talking about the regular series right now. We're talking about that 2020 annual. Yeah, these annuals have been a great turning point for this uh, IDW ongoing series. And, you know, if you go back and look at some of the past years, these annuals become tough to find. They tend to be printed a little lower, largely due to the fact that the cover price is inflated. This book comes with a $5.99 cover price. But there are some amazing covers. Uh, I like cover A a lot. Uh, cover B is, of course, Eastman. And that 1 in 10 incentive, I think, will be sure to be in demand because of uh, just overall scarcity. As, again, annuals are not typically heavily ordered. Um, but this one is kind of cool. focuses on the villains of the TMNT series. Uh, and it's definitely an issue I will be grabbing. And I like IDW because we kind of talked about this with that Sonic 2020 annual where we mentioned a lot of annuals are almost like one-shot self-contained stories. Yep. But these, they, they tie right into that continuity of the regular series. So I think that's a great one to look at also. And we're going back to back to back with IDW, and we're going with Kanto. They're giving us that one shot right now, right before the kickoff, that volume two. And this is Kanto Clockwork Fairies, and it's going to have a couple incentives as well, right? Absolutely. We've got a one in 10 incentive as well as a one in 25 incentive. And the Kanto team has done a great job putting together incentive covers that have really penetrated the secondary market. These guys have been hitting on all cylinders. Of course, I'm talking about Mr. Seven Seasons and a movie himself writer David Boer and our real life hero David Drew excuse me <clears throat> our real life hero Drew Zucker who's out saving lives by day as an EMT in the middle of a pandemic and creating this great tin man with a heart um, that we've all grown to know and love in Canto by night and uh, really shout out to both of them because seeing their ascension has been awesome they're great friends of the channel but this is also a property that we believe in we've talked about it uh, you know it's, it's gotten consistent reader buzz it's one of those books that no matter how much you doubt 
people who have read the book resoundingly come back with a response that Canto is amazing. We're getting ready for that second volume. And on top of it, now we're talking about the one shot, which I think will be a great transition period and sure to be ordered a little less than that volume two. We're seeing a lot of uh, store exclusives for the volume two. People are hyped for it. I think this one could fall by the wayside. Be sure to check out that one in 25 incentive for sure. But to be honest with you, I'm down for anything Canto. Yeah, I'll fully admit I have some bias towards this, but the story is great and stands on its own. Anyone that's read it will say the same thing. Yep. But yes, I love David Boo or Drew Zucker, two great stand-up guys trying to make that living in comics. They're doing a hell of a job promoting this. Also, if you're not following David Boo on social media like Twitter and Instagram, make sure you do so because he's about to post five signed paperbacks with the Canto pen. So make sure you follow him so you can catch the details on that. Moving away from IDW, but we're sticking with indie books with Boom Studios. We got that monster, Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, Ranger Slayer number one. This has that gorgeous foil Goni Montez cover, as well as some incentives, I believe, right? That's right. We're talking about our one in 10 incentive and a one in 25 incentive. And while those don't seem like maybe high ratio incentives, one thing that's important to note is this is an $8.99 cover price book. So stores will be less likely to order those 25 copies to qualify for that black and white incentive um, and could really drive up the secondary market values. Now we know Ranger Slayer along with Lord Draken are the two most popular characters in Power Rangers right now. And Lord Draken himself is getting a three issue miniseries coming soon. So I think this one shot is gonna be a great stepping stone into that three issue Draken series. On top of that, we're talking about a one shot. Again, the same principles I think that we just applied to Canto will apply here where stores will be less likely to order a one shot and less likely to pay that inflated cover price. And I think that could drive down some of the print runs from what this book would typically do if it was a three ninety nine. dollars book of an ongoing series. So that's something to keep an eye out for. We both love this book. I'm with you on that Goni Montez foil variant. There's also a spoiler variant. Um, and again, those incentives are sure to get people's attention. Yeah, I was, I was going to see if you said it, because if there's one thing that I'm more hyped for than that Goni Montez variant is that spoiler variant. Hmm. Heard rumor of what it may or may not contain. I don't know if it's true, but either way, the spoiler variant would be the one that I would pre-order for my collection. So we've gotten into five picks and we are just now moving over to the big two for the first time in this final order cutoff list. And we are talking about DC Comics with Batman number 95 and that whole Joker war, right? Absolutely. And this book is all about the Joker, Brian, because we've got Joker on cover A. We've got Joker on cover B with Matina. And we've also got Joker on that one in 25 Jimenez design variant. So we're going Joker, Joker, Joker. Oh, three Jokers. That's that's uh, that's kind of interesting. But either way, I love the Matina cover. The Matina cover really looks like the type of cover you would get in an exclusive variant that would be charged anywhere from, you know, thirteen to twenty dollars. So I really like that that minimal trade dress cover B on this one. Um, and I think people are digging these design variants. I know that the designer himself maybe didn't pan out, but. You can't really go wrong with the Clown Prince of Gotham. It's certainly not a first appearance, but this uh, Joker War story is heating up, and man, the reader buzz on this series is something else, Brian. Yeah, and it's funny. I mean, I agree with you that Matina Cover B does look like something that would be like an exclusive retailer variant, which brings me also to the topic of exclusive variants. We heard a lot of times on here where we're talking about Frankie's, which is a channel sponsor, but we also want to let you guys know, head over to exclusivevariants.com where you can see highlights of all the retailers and all their exclusive variants helping out the industry helping you out as the viewer and the shopper find a centralized location to find out what retailer variants exist right absolutely and once it's a service to retailers it's a service to the comic collecting community uh, hopefully it will clear the air on some of the misinformation surrounding releases um, and we hope you like it. So be sure to go check out exclusivevariants.com because the publishers certainly are. And we're going to talk about it with this next book here.
Sticking with DC, we're talking about Justice League Dark number 24. I like this for a couple reasons because it's got that Ram V writer. We know him from the Savage Shores from Vault Comics, but this also has a great cover B for it, right? Absolutely. And that's really why we're talking about this one this week because, you know, your reaction may be Justice League Dark 24. What's so special about that? Well, we mentioned ExclusiveVariants.com where we're trying to highlight all of the great retailers, shared exclusives that are going on in the comic community. And these publishers are paying attention to it too because we are seeing a lot of artists really break out with retailer exclusive variants and then the big two comes calling. And that's what happened with this issue because we have the debut of John Jang for DC Comics. Now, if you're not familiar with John Jang, He's, he's done a lot of great work with Ninja Turtles. He did a Ninja Turtles Power Rangers variant for Boom. He did DC Year of the Villain exclusives. Year of the Villain exclusives, right. So he's done a, he's already done some big two work through the exclusive program. And what ends up happening is these publishers, they see that and they see who sells, who causes a demand, who's art are people responding to. We've seen it with Francesco Mattina. We saw it with Lucio Perillo. Um, and now we're seeing it here. And uh, I, I'm excited to see how Jang is received by a larger community. This is a hot cover beat. Awesome. I'm definitely ordering it. I'm not saying it's going to be some big secondary market gainer, but I love to see uh, the big two kind of reaching out to that next tier artist. But that's also why you got to be paying attention to ExclusiveVariants.com because the artists of today working on retailer exclusives are going to be the big two artists of tomorrow. Then moving from DC over to Image Comics, we get Bliss number one. This is going to be the first issue in a two-arc maxi-series. It also kind of has a, I'll say si kind of a bone parish type feel. I think it's just because it's drugs related. But either way, it's got the creative team from Coyotes or Coyotes, however you want to call it. But what do you have to say about this one, Jack? Yeah, you know, image number ones, we talked about this one on the Bolo show, that they, they're slowly starting to kind of get back into the market of releasing some of these number ones. And so the, the slowness of them getting out there, I think, kind of plays to their benefit. So I think this book will get a lot of attention. Um, the fact that while it may be a mini series, it's actually a maxi, eight, like you mentioned, eight issues, two arcs. Um, I think that will kind of ease some collectors' worries. But I think people should have no fear because we've already seen minis turn into ongoings just by simply buying comics and being into the story. So this one intrigues you. Perfect example of a book that you need to make sure that you're pre-ordering. Um, you make sure you get those pre-orders in because you just don't want to take the chance that your LCS is going to have this one on the shelf. So make sure you get those orders in before Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Hit your local LCS up. And if, you know, you can't hit your local LCS up or for whatever reason, you know, they don't do pre-orders or you've got issues or you don't have a local LCS, be sure to shop uh, online. Look at local retailers. Hit up people like BlackKickComics.com as well as Frankie comics.com who do a lot of foc ordering yeah they they tagline this and the solicit is breaking bad meets nail game and sandman right and that's two great properties to compare right there Here we're talking win number two, which of course comes from Boom Studios. First issue was well received. A lot of it was garnered by that Peach Momoko cover, but I think once people got it and started reading that series, we all know it's got a great writer in James Tinian, but issue number two comes out and guess what? It's got another Peach Momoko variant, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Like you mentioned, a lot of buzz. This was originally supposed to be a graphic novel, kind of hit that um, young adult kind of all ages and kind of demographic, which is certainly killing it. Um, I know both of our children, are, or especially our oldest children, are all about those kind of graphic novels. But Boom saw an opportunity to help out comic shops turn this into a monthly series. We're hitting issue number two. 40 pages of story for $4.99 cover price. You can't beat that. But you know what? I say all of that, and I know all you guys are going to care about is Peach. Because you're right, Brian. You got a Peach 125, Peach Momoko. Um, I like the cover. I think it goes well with the first issue. Um, and we're already seeing pre-sales of $68 to $100 on this book. Um, you know, with, with the high cost, this would cost a retailer about 62 50 
to get a copy. So I do expect to see kind of above ratio pricing on this one. Um, but I think 45 to 50 seems more logical than where we're seeing it right now. But you really can't discount anything with Peach. People are going for the gusto. Um, I would even be expecting to see some store variants for this one as well um, because if I was a retailer looking at doing store variants and I did issue number one I would probably jump on issue number two as well as an opportunity to get a stack of these one in 25 incentives yeah not me I'm gonna pick up cover a I'm gonna avoid the peach apocalypse <laughs> I do like that cover it's a great cover but there's no way I'd pay that much for it and I like the story so much I'm just gonna go with the regular cover for this We don't speak too much on Dynamite books, but we're doing so right now, and that's right. We got Green Hornet number one. Dynamite's done quite a few Green Hornet series, but why do we have this one on Last Call, Jack? Well, I think it's something worth talking about for the same reason that I imagine Dynamite is rebooting the series, which is the fact that Seth Rogen had announced several months ago that they were rebooting the movie. Um, now, don't expect to see Seth Rogen in it. I've also read that don't expect it to be a comedy similar to how it was. Um, it looks like they're going to make a, a real true to form Green Hornet movie. Um, it, the property is still owned uh, as far as the cinematic rights by Seth Rogen. And while you may say that that's not a good thing if your thought process is based on the first movie, but don't forget Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg are also the team that put together the television show, the boys, as well as preacher. So they have experience. They went from green Hornet to preacher to the boys. I feel like they've gotten better with each project. So I'm actually kind of hopeful for a new green Hornet series. And while yes, there's certainly some vintage books you could pay attention to. There are a lot of incentives here. Um, there's a lot of great covers and we know the fact that the, you know, the modern market tends to pick up quickly once movie talk gets involved. So it's something to pay attention to. Um, and especially one that I think will be slept on by a lot of people. All I know is if they remake that movie, like they talk about, I hope that they use Brad Pitt as a stunt double in it. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you go watch the latest Quentin Tarantino movie because it's just badass and he beats up Bruce Lee in there. I'm telling you. <laughs> but either way, great pick. And yes, what the fuck is that? Like brain farting on the name Hollywood. Um, Once, upon a time. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. But yeah, go watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as well. But there it is, guys. Those are our picks for comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. Make sure you get those orders in either online, talk to your LCS, but get them in, secure them. And like we always say, right, Jack, you can get that maximum discount by pre-ordering them ahead of time. Absolutely. Uh, go early and save big. And with that being said, guys, this is Brian and Jack from Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.